Hey everyone, Gretchen here. During one of my sessions yesterday with a, um, a sophomore in high school who was really concerned about an upcoming test that he has, I found myself articulating um, something brand new about how to create a study guide and so I wanted to share it with you all. One of his frustrations is that at his school they, they are given a computer and they uh, keep their notes in, um, in their computer. So for every day he has notes in a different file and he's like, ah, I just feel so confused. My teacher didn't give me a study guide and I have all these different documents that I have to go through. Like, how do I study? And we talked about two different kinds of um, ways to think about study guides. First of all, he does need to take handwritten notes. Uh, we remember information much more clearly when we actually use our hand. And so if you are someone who takes your first notes, your what I call your get it down notes, um, typing, which is okay if you do that, but then please do take some time to go back and turn those notes into what I call hone it till you own it notes and use your hand, like handwrite those. Then there are two ways to think about um, to think about study guides. The first is you want to find a problem that you're going to solve. And what I mean by this problem solving is that you want to think through like, hmm, I think I want to take all like my seven documents of notes and I want to see if I can get them to fit onto one sheet of paper. That's my problem I'm going to solve. Um, another problem might be to look over your notes and see, oh gosh, um, everything that we talked about this week is cause and effect. So I'm going to create a cause and effect chart and then I'm going to fill that chart out. Again, that's, that's a problem. The problem is it's an empty chart and you need to solve it. You need to fill it. Um, sometimes when we give ourselves a problem to solve, it makes uh, the study process just a little bit more interesting to the brain. So that's number one. The second way is to think about um, a quizzable format. So in this situation, you're going to choose a quizzable format if you're thinking like, mm, I know that I want to be able to test myself to see what I have right and what I have wrong. And so I want to create, a, get my notes down in a way that I can quiz myself. Flashcards are a typical quizzable format. Um, another one that I'm just going to sketch out quickly here for you is the T-chart. looks pretty simple, but on this side, you know, you'll put questions, like actually with a, um, you know, like written out with a question mark, or you can put key terms here, and on the other side, you'll do answers. Um, I know it looks really simple and straightforward, but actually it's super powerful, and this client and I spent much of our session practicing looking through his notes writing great questions, and then writing the answers. There is an art to great questions. I don't want to take the time to do that now, but I will create another video at another time uh, about that because the better you get at asking the right questions, uh, the better that your information will stick in your brain. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.